faith, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are so excited to worship God. Amen. God is a good God. He's in the blessing business, and we love him because he first loved us. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter into his courts with praise. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so we honor the Lord's presence today. We thank him for his goodness and his mercy towards us. We thank him for being the God who looked beyond every one of our faults and saw our needs. And so we want you to invite your friends and neighbors uh, this morning. Uh, invite them in on Facebook. I believe we're just on Facebook Live today and then on, on the phones. Amen. We want you to invite them in for watch parties. We're going to worship God for he is in control. Just another day that the Lord has kept us. He has kept us through danger seen and unseen. And not only do you have a right to praise him, but you, I know you have a reason to praise him. And so we're going to lift him up. We're going to magnify him and we're going to glorify his name. Begin to clap your hands in your living room. Begin to clap your hands even in the sanctuary. Begin to give him glory. Amen. God is good. God is good. And he's good all the time. He's good. He's a great God. And he's worthy to be praised. And so, Father, we lift our hands today and we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our lying down last night and our raising up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for touching us with your finger of divine love. God, we thank you for the activity of our limbs. We thank you for our mind, a mind to serve you. Thank you, Lord, for using us for your glory. And so, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you will stir up the gift that's within us. God, remove every hindrance. Remove every uh, distraction of this kingdom assignment today. Father, you will be glorified. You will be magnified. We'll praise you as though it's our last time. It could be. We don't know. And so, God, nobody has to beg us. Nobody has to proud us. Nobody has to push us. Just the fact that when we look back over our lives and see where you brought us from God you've been a way maker you've been a promise keeper and so God we can't help but praise you we have a case that I can't help us we can't help but lift our hands we can't help but glorify you and so God right now God touch every mind God touch every heart God move from heart to heart and breast to breast God right now touch the suicidal touch those who are discouraged touch those who feel like they're gonna lose it God turn it around right now in the name of Jesus we declare your glory you shall be glorified for you are a healer you are a way maker you are a door opener father right now in the name of Jesus we sound the alarm this morning and we put hell on notice that you should have killed us when you had the chance but God as we stand here right now God we give you glory for thine is the kingdom and the power it's not about us it's not about us but it's all about you God no flesh will glory in your presence remove our attitudes God remove yesterday's thoughts but right now in the name of Jesus Father heal God stir up the gift that's within us this morning we bind the enemy Satan the blood of Jesus is against you hallelujah we plead the blood the blood the blood the blood, the blood over this service the blood over our minds the blood over our bodies and we claim victory victory right now God do it right now in the name of Jesus I know you can I know you will do it right now God put families back together do it right now God open up doors that the enemy has tried to close and so God we're not gonna wait until the battle was over but we began to clap our hands and we're going to give you the glory we give you the glory be glorified be magnified we didn't come for a show but God right now touch right now deliver right now make a way make a way right now hey God oh God shake us again God shake us again God shake Take us again, God. One touch wasn't enough. Touch us, Lord, again. Hallelujah. Find the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Revive us until we'll tell a dying world that you live. Revive us. Give us our joy back. Give us our peace back. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. You are the potter. Yes.
yes, God. We say yes, Lord. We say yes, God. We say yes, God. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Do what you want in this service. We didn't come for church as usual. But God, right now, God, do it right now. We need your glory. We need your supernatural power. We need you to heal. We need you to set free. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. We love you, Lord. Hey. Hey. We thank you. We thank you. Be glorified in this place, on this day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands uh, in your living room. Uh, clap your hands uh, in this sanctuary. Open up your mouth uh, and declare it's my time. Uh, open up your mouth uh, and declare it's your season. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Come on, somebody praise him. Come on, somebody praise him. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, clap your hands, clap your hands and praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Yes. Yes. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Come on, somebody praise him right there. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made so I will rejoice come on you ought to clap your hands right there I will rejoice I got a reason to rejoice I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Why? Because he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice. For he has made me glad. He has made me glad. made me glad. Come on, let's stay right there. Let's take it from that. I will enter, say, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say That's your testimony. Clap your hands and bless him. It's so good to see some of y'all this morning. It's good to see the virtual church this morning. We come to give God praise today. Anybody come to lift him higher today? Somebody say, I will lift up your name. Higher and higher. Hallelujah.
Somebody praise Jesus. What's his name? Oh, yeah. One, two, one, two. Call him Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. your name say great great Jehovah. you are wonderful you are wonderful great Jehovah. great Jehovah. you are wonderful you are wonderful great Jehovah. you are wonderful you are wonderful i will lift i will lift up your name higher somebody lift them higher somebody lift them high somebody lift them high Jimmy, somebody lift him high. He's worthy, yeah. Anybody came to lift up Jesus? Oh, yeah. Hey, I wish somebody that came to lift him today. Look at somebody and say, I don't know about you, but I came to lift them a little bit higher. I've been going through all week long, but while I'm here, I come to lift them higher. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Somebody wave your hand and call his name. What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Hey, Jesus. 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 Mary's baby. Jesus. Jesus. Rose of Sharon. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Friday morning star, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Lily of the Valley, Jesus, 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 He's done. He's done. 
of COVID. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless Whoa. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He made a way. Let him have Does anybody way. know he made a way? He made a way. Oh, he made a way. He brought me out. He brought me out. Do I have one witness? He brought me out. Somebody say, he brought me out. In the midst of what I'm going through, he brought me out. Oh, he brought, I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. I cannot bear these burdens alone. Woo! In my distress, he kindly will help me. Gee, he ever loves me and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these burdens alone in my distress he kindly will help me you want to look at somebody and say jesus can help you turn it around jesus will help you i know you've been crying but jesus he will help you jesus alone i must tell jesus I wish somebody would lift your hands and tell them, I must tell Jesus, I, I cannot bear these burdens, these heavy burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. Somebody lift your voice and say, Jesus will help me. Look at somebody across the room and say, Jesus can help you. Jesus will help us. Jesus alone. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Yes, God. Whoa, what? What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often fall What needless pains we bear And it's all because we do not care Care everything to God in prayer you now for this moment of preaching God have your way touch every heart move even through this computer screen those who are watching at home all over this place this country speak to our hearts Lord give us a word from on high that we can be better and we thank you in Jesus name and we say amen and we type amen hallelujah first Samuel chapter 30 1 Samuel chapter 30 today, beginning at verse 16. I'm reading out of the New International Version uh, of the Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 30, uh, beginning at verse 16. A very familiar passage of, passage of scripture uh, we want to look at today. And I believe it's going to speak to us. This is the word of the Lord in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Those who are online, please make sure you're typing that in to help those uh, who are taking notes. 1 Samuel chapter 30. And we want to begin looking at the 16th verse. Amen. It says, he led David down and they 
They were scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking, and reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the day, and none of them got away except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. I'm going to stop right there. He recovered everything. Mm. I want to talk from the subject, I had it, I lost it, I'm taking it back. I had it, I lost it, I'm taking it back. I want to begin with a question today, amen, a question, praise God. What, what's wrong with your Christian life, amen? What happened to you? What, what happened to God's most awesome and magnificent creation, amen? Out of all of creation, man is God's masterpiece. Man is God's masterpiece creation, and his intent was that we live an abundant life. Um, for this reason, Jesus penned the words uh, in John chapter 10, verse 10, when he said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give us access to abundant life. And if Jesus, if you listen to him with an attentive ear, you will recognize the warning that he gave. And he left it on record. He talked about the thief. The thief would come with three goals in mind. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But on the opposite side of that, Jesus said, I have one goal in mind, and that's to give us abundant life. What is abundant life? Abundant life uh, is a full, pleasurable life filled with lots of joy, amen, and enjoyment. An abundant life is a life filled with happiness, love, laughter, and peace, amen. And so again, I have to ask some Christians today, amen, what happened to you? What's wrong with your Christian life? Because so many believers have hanging heads, frowning faces, and stressful thoughts. So many believers have burdened hearts and saddened spirits and bitter memories and unhappy feelings, amen. So many believers have allowed themselves to become bitter and they have been robbed, amen, and they have been shackled by heavy burdens and been burdened by guilt and been burdened by shame and we've been messed up by our shortcomings and we've been uh, trapped by our past and, amen, the enemy is trying to hold us captive uh, because he cannot possess us but he'll try to oppress us and look at us not understanding fully who we are because if you look at the scripture you will understand that Jesus and the word of God says that we we're heirs. Matter of fact, it says uh, that we're joint heirs with Christ. Matter of fact, it not only says that we're joint heirs with Christ, but the scripture says we are God's peculiar people. Not only are we joint heirs with Christ and God's peculiar people, the Bible says that we are God's chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We have kingdom authority. We have authority in God, but yet so many of us live uh, like we're not even his. So I have to ask the question again this morning what happened to your joy what happened to your peace what happened to your happiness what 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 happened because long before COVID I've come to understand and I've been in church all my life uh, that some of us have been good at wearing masks uh, you ain't just started wearing masks uh, you've been wearing masks for a long time uh, you really don't have joy on the inside and some of us have been pretending to be happy but we're really not not happy. Some of us have walked around with false faces, amen, and we've been good at hiding our emotions, but the truth of the matter is uh, there are for many, their life is miserable, and they're not living the abundant life. Some of us walk around complaining, uh, I don't have the man I want. I don't have the woman I want. I don't have the job that I want. I don't drive the car that I want. I don't live in the house that I want to live in and you just, hey man, have settled with I guess this will do attitude. But I stopped by to tell you today, Jesus says, no, you're not to settle for the mediocre. I've come that you might have life. You don't have to walk around here pretending I've come to give you the real thing. And I came to preach to somebody listening to me today and tell you this morning that God
God wants to take you uh, from just surviving uh, to surviving and thriving. Uh, somebody type that in. I'm thriving. Uh, I'm not just going to be average. Uh, I'm not settling for mediocre. When God has so much more, I feel like preaching uh, for my life. Uh, is there anybody in here that understands uh, that you don't have to settle uh, uh, and live beneath your privilege uh, when God has made promises to you and that where you are right now is not how it's always going to be and so are you waiting on God to do it you got to learn how to give him the glory and you got to learn how to walk like you got it you got to learn how to talk like you already got it I came to tell you even if you don't have money you ain't got to act like you're broke you ain't got to look like you're broke even if you got trouble you don't have to sing the song nobody knows the trouble I've seen but you can turn your pouting into praising and let the enemy know uh, that I'm convinced uh, hallelujah that nothing can separate me uh, I feel like preaching uh, from the love of God uh, and I won't settle at this place uh, I'm going to keep standing uh, until God raises me up uh, I'm going to keep standing till he dries tears from my eyes uh, I'm going to keep standing uh, till I get my peace back uh, and my joy back I'm going to keep standing I, I believe I believe uh, I believe today and I have reason to believe that some of you have been ripped off. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you today. Hear me. I said some of you have been ripped off and the good life of God has been kidnapped from you. I believe that Jesus, yes, your Jesus joy has been taken from you and you've been living with borrowed joy and temporary happiness. Shame on the people of God who are stuck living with borrowed joy and temporary happiness. Shame on the people of God uh, who are stuck living um, with borrowed emotions. Um, shame on the people of God uh, who are living with half uh, when God promised you the whole thing. Uh, shame on the people of God uh, who are settling for a piece of this uh, and a piece of that. Uh, I got to really ask you, what happened uh, to your smile this morning? Um, I want you to know this morning uh, that you have the God-given right to smile. Um, the devil wants to take the smile off your face. Uh, but you ought to make the devil mad this morning uh, and even if you got a mask on smile under the mask uh, and let the devil know I've got something uh, on the inside uh, that you can't break uh, I've got something on the inside uh, that you can't shake uh, I came to tell you some of you lost some stuff uh, uh, but God told me to tell you you're getting ready to get it back uh, I said you're getting ready to get your stuff back uh, everything the devil has stolen from you uh, God is getting ready to take you uh, to another place in him oh beloved that's the story of this text this morning because if you look in first Samuel chapter 30 you will discover that David and his men were returning to their home in Ziglag they had been on a three-day journey and they're returning back home and according to verse 3 when they get home they found their home destroyed by fire they found their home burned up and they found it burned in ashes uh, by a group of people known as the Amalekites. Uh, and it seemed that while David and his men were away, uh, the enemy came to play. Y'all missed it. Y'all gonna catch up. Uh, I said it seemed like while they were away, uh, the enemy came in uh, to evade their homes. Um, can I give you a point? Uh, the first thing you gotta understand is um, the enemy gets in when nobody's home. Y'all missed it. Um, I'm trying to tell you when you journey away from God, uh, that's when the devil will try to creep in and mess up your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy comes in and he tears up some stuff. But notice in the text, the first thing the devil does, he tries to destroy the home. Hallelujah. Because the enemy knows the home is your life. It's your family. The home is your shelter. The home is your fortitude. The home is your protection. Your home is your greatest asset. Set. And so what does the enemy do? He tries to destroy the home by destroying relationships with people in the house. Y'all not saying nothing. I'm preaching to y'all. And a lot of folks live in a house, but it's not a home. Because the truth of the matter is, there are so many families that are divided. The wife has her own agenda, and the husband has his own 
priorities and the children are doing their own things and it just seems like the home has been messed up no prayer in the home no fasting in the home no respect in the home that's because the enemy if you turn your head one second will mess up your family if you turn your head one second will try to mess up your life look at the text the enemy came to burn up their homes and the next thing we see is that the enemy took the women and the children captive wait a minute I said he took the women and the children captive they represent the weakness notice that the Amalekites did not kill the women and the children they just took them and made them slaves can I preach to you for a minute and stick a quarter in the meter and tell you the devil ain't gotta kill you he rather enslave your mind I'm trying to tell you something he'll let you go to church he'll let you get your praise on as long as you don't believe what you dancing about as long as he'll let you quote scripture as long as you don't believe the scripture that you quote and there's a lot of folk walking around with limited control over themselves and some of you today listening to me are walking around with an incarcerated mind but God sent me to tell you you're going to get your mind back the devil's tried to make your mind a slave he's taken a righteousness away from you he's taken loyalty away from you he's taken purity away from you in other words he's trying to destroy you hallelujah but I came to tell you today if you get nothing else out of this message everything the enemy tried to do to break you down everything the enemy tried to do to take your mind God's about to get you to a place where what you've been going through ain't gonna bother you anymore where some of the stuff you cried about you're gonna start laughing about it look at this text hallelujah the enemy takes the women and the children and he holds them captive and the bible says in verse 4 that they begin to lose their power because the enemy had taken their joy he began to take their strength and so David's army began in verse 4 to lose their strength the people of God began to experience some traumatic and painful emotions until they lost their strength and I'm preaching to somebody right now this pandemic has been testing you you have lost some stuff you feel like you're losing your strength sometimes it feels like the walls are caving in at you but I came to tell you this morning hallelujah you've got to learn instead of crying how to praise God even when you almost on E as long as you got breath in your body you gotta open up your mouth and give God the glory I hear what you're thinking pastor I want to give him the glory but how can I praise God when I don't feel my joy like I used to feel it how can I praise God with sickness in my body how can I praise God and I'm unemployed how can I praise God and my marriage is in trouble how can I praise God and my kids are acting up preacher how can I praise God and I can't pay my rent how can I praise God and it looks like I don't have all the resources that I need I came to tell you today it does not matter what you're going through I've learned a long time ago uh, that you got to push through some stuff. Uh, you got to praise God uh, until he does it. Uh, you got to praise God uh, until it turns around. Uh, because I told you a few weeks ago uh, that praise is your weapon. Uh, and the reason why a lot of y'all uh, don't have nothing is because you ain't saying nothing. Uh, hallelujah. Because the Bible says uh, that the power of life and death uh, is in your mouth. Uh, you've got to learn how to say something. Uh, you got to learn how to speak over yourself and say I shall live and shall not die you gotta learn how to speak over yourself and tell yourself I'm not the borrower I'm the lender you gotta learn how to speak over yourself and tell yourself I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me look at them in this text how they have lost their strength but if that wasn't bad enough and I'm almost out of this place 
Verse 6 says something. David's army got upset. They got so upset that they said they're going to stone David. Look at the text. The folks closest to David are ready to kill him. They're in a crisis. But the ones that used to be David's go-to want to stone David. Isn't it amazing that sometimes your own family will stand in your way? Isn't it amazing that sometimes the ones that have the same blood in their veins as you will stand in your way? Look at David and his men robbed of their peace. They're becoming bitter with one another. Hallelujah. Notice how the enemy causes mass confusion in your life. He'll take your peace. Hallelujah. He'll try to disrupt family relationships. Hallelujah. But God told me to tell you, you got to get mad at the devil. This is not the season for punks in the kingdom. You got to get mad at the devil. The issue was not David, but yet the ones closest to him wanted to stone him. Let me help some of y'all. One of the biggest tricks of the enemy is try to turn us against each other. But the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You got Christians fighting Christians. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. You got Christians jealous of other Christians. You got Christians with the crap mentality trying to pull other believers down. Hallelujah. But I stopped by to tell you instead of being divided we're stronger together something happens when believers get together something happens when believers start praying hallelujah David hallelujah is being threatened by his men that we should stone you it would look like now that David should have a nervous breakdown it would look like that David should throw in the towel because everybody closest to him was turning their back on him. All of his cheerleaders, hallelujah, were nowhere to be found. But let me tell you something, baby. In this life, sometimes you got to become your own cheerleader. I feel like preaching in here. Sometimes the ones you're looking to help you will be the last to be found. But I like what David did. David said, guess what? I'm going to preach my own sermon. David said, I'm going to pat my own self on the back. The Bible says that David strengthened himself in the Lord. You know, I love my church family, but I've been separated from them for three months. I love my preachers, but I've been separated from them for three months. And so I come to understand that sometimes the ones you need can't be there. And then sometimes you got to learn how to talk to yourself. Sometimes you got to learn how to pray your own prayer. Sometimes you got to learn how to lift your hands and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help. I know David strengthened himself. And what I want to tell y'all, get yourself together. Stop waiting for help to come. Encourage yourself in the law. Have I got a witness? The Bible says, David said, bring me the ephod. In verse 7, pastor, what's an ephod? E-P-H-O-D. A ephod was symbolic. It was a symbolic expression of the presence of God through the priest. The ephod was worn by the priest and it contained the sacred stones that was used to discern the will of God. In other words, David said, Lord, I've lost everything. Lord, 
beyond what should I do and I came to tell y'all if you lost some stuff you can't always go to mama you can't always go to daddy but you gotta understand where your help comes from and I believe David knew that all of his help came from the Lord no wonder he wrote I will lift my eyes unto the hills I feel like preaching from with coming my help all my help comes from the Lord can I preach it like I feel it he put on the ephod and David said Lord what should I do I'm preaching to somebody that's got trouble all around you and I came to tell you Jesus is on the main line call him and tell him what you want tell him what you need hallelujah David said they got my wives they have my children I lost everything Lord I need some direction somebody here this morning you need some direction but God told me to tell you you're in the right place at the right time to receive the right thing from the Lord before I go I gotta tell you what the Lord said the Lord said to David I want you to pursue and go get your stuff back I came to tell somebody go get your stuff I came to tell somebody I know you lost it but I hear the Lord saying I just let the enemy borrow your stuff because what the enemy has is still belongs to you go get your stuff go get your joy back go get your child back go get your family back and y'all know what David did David and his army they went after the Amalekites they fought them for 48 hours hallelujah and the Bible says only about 200 got away they fought them and they took some stuff they fought some more and they took their stuff they got all of their stuff back God sent me to tell you I know we've been in a pandemic I know some of y'all are on unemployment I know some of y'all feel like hallelujah you weren't gonna make it but I hear the Lord saying it's your time to take back everything take back what the devil stole take your mind back take your love back take your home back take your family back take your healing back yeah take everything that the enemy has tried to steal thank you Lord look at the text David and his army took it all back and when they came out of the fight they came out with more than when they went in God sent me to tell you this time when you come out you're coming out stronger this time when you come out you're coming out wiser say yeah yeah oh yeah they came out better after the struggle after the fight after the pandemic after they lost their child they came out better they had it they lost it but they took it back you can have it back today you can have it back today you have the right to be happy you have a right to laugh you have a right to live good you ought to claim it claim your new house claim your car 
claim it that I'm not going to just be making it. I'm going to be thriving. Claim your better relationship. Claim healthy children. Claim your prosperous life. Get your marriage back. Get all of your money back. Get your family back. Satan can't have your daughter. Satan can't have your son. Satan can't have your family. Satan can't have the company. Satan can't have the business. I don't care what you lost. You can get it back because God is on your side. And if God be for you, I said if God be for you, if God be for you, who can be against you? What schemer, what devil, what voodoo, what witch, what curse? Hallelujah. Because the scripture declares that we're more than conquerors. I said we're more than conquerors. Those of you listening today, you're more than a conqueror. Take it back. Get back your stuff. Don't you get up another Monday with a frown on your face. You got to change your atmosphere. And God will do the rest. I'm praying right now. I'm praying, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. So many people under the sound of my voice felt like they lost it and they'll never get it back. But the devil is a liar. Father, we thank you that you are a God that will restore us. You give us bounce back. And we thank you for this word, God, for reminding us. Even when the enemy think he has the upper hand, when we look to you, you'll flip the script on the enemy. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you've allowed the enemy to hold our stuff. And, and it's only, they just holding it. God, thank you for the kingdom authority to just go in and take it. Thank you, Lord, that it's already ours. We bless you in Jesus' name. And we say amen. We type amen. Listen, those of you watching today, if you want to give your life to Jesus, amen, if you want to give your life to Jesus, today is a good day. You lost some stuff. Maybe it was alcoholism. Maybe it was drug addiction. Whatever it may be, you might have lost some things. And the enemy has told you you can never recover. The devil is a liar. The Bible says, and David and his army, watch this, recovered all. <laughs> recovered all. You may have broken relationships in your family. You can recover, but you just got to get God's direction. But it starts with giving your life to Jesus. And so today is a good day to give your life to him. Listen, if you're listening, and you're saying, Pastor, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. I've, I've, I've been hurt. I've lost some things. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want you to begin to type in, I made a decision. You're saying today, I, I choose Jesus. If you've never given your life to him, but today, right now, while God has your attention, if you're making a decision, I want you to type in, I made a decision. Make that decision. Say yes to God. Pray this prayer with me. Lord, I am a sinner. Come into my life. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins, that he rose from the grave with all power in his hands. I confess you, Jesus, as my Savior and Lord. And because of this, I know and in this moment, I'm saved. What's so powerful about the Lord? He's right there in your living room. He's right in your home. He's here in this sanctuary. We can call on him and have different needs, and he can meet every need at the same time. That's how awesome our God is. And so if you made a decision today, write us, email us. Amen. At Mount Olive Church Ministries. Amen. Let us know you made a decision. If you want to become a part of our church family, let us know that. We'll be glad to have you a part of our family. Amen. We'll be glad to have you contact us. We're here. We're here. We love you. Amen. The church has been rolling on, and we're still here. We thank God for each and every one of you who have tuned in today, and even uh, some of our cloud of witnesses that are scattered in this sanctuary. Amen. We love you in Jesus' name. Listen, it's time to give, and we invite you. We invite you to become kingdom partners with us at Mount Olive with the membership because ministry costs. The gospel is free, but ministry costs. We want you to sow with us. We thank God for those of you around the country who have started sowing into our ministry. And we want to let you know, we thank God we get your emails. Some of you even write when you sow a seed. And we have an amazing finance team. They let us know that you write us or email us. And so we thank God for our kingdom partners around the country. Thank God for many of you who have allowed me to become your e-pastor, your pandemic pastor. Amen. Who watch us each and every week. Listen, we want you to give with us. Some of you may be tuning in today for the first time and you're asking yourself, how can I give? How can I sow? Amen. I'll give you the instruction. 
Amen. Um, you can go to our website, mocm.org. We apologize today for the technical difficulties. We know many people had to uh, come on to Facebook. Our streaming was down. We lost some power. We lost some power in the street that our church is on on yesterday. So many of you had to come over to Facebook. Um, but you can go to our website and sow seed on mocm.org. You can give your tithes and offering by simply uh, clicking on that donations tab at the top right uh, corner on the screen. And you, and you can give right now. Givelify. Also, if you uh, download the Givelify app, Manalo Church Ministries, Hartford, Connecticut is right on there. You can download Givelify on your phone, amen, and you can type in Manalo Church Ministries, Hartford, Connecticut. And then after you type in Manalo Church Ministries, Hartford, Connecticut, follow the prompts that they give you, amen. Uh, finally, the last two categories of giving, the ways you can give, you can mail in your seed to Manalo Church Ministries. Our address is 20 Battle Street. Amen. Right in the city of Hartford, Connecticut, 06120. Amen. 06120. And you can uh, write Attention Finance Department. And finally, um, our offices are still open. Our offices are still open at Mount Olive uh, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You can come by. And our um, secretarial, our administrative staff, excuse me, is there. You can bring your contribution there. But we're looking for kingdom partners today. Amen. So we can continue to carry out the mission of the church. One thing about it, I've come to understand, looking at Amazon and all these other things. Amen. We can sow where we want to sow. Amen. And we can spend even in the pandemic. And so when you sow into the kingdom of God, it's a great investment. We don't believe in begging you, but we will ask you to become partners with us so that we can carry out the mission of the church. Amen. We praise God for you. We thank God for every person that's having a birthday this week. Um, we have been honoring that. Um, we know that many of our members are on the birthday calendar. Amen. And I want to wish you a happy birthday. I thought I had my list with me and all my stuff. Praise God. I think I was, I'm off my game today. Lord have mercy. I don't know if they have those on the screens. Will they save me today? Are they going to save me? Nope. They can't save me today. All right. That's all right. I'm saving myself because I got my paper. In Jesus' name. I told you, encourage yourself. I didn't give up. Amen. We want to uh, we want to say happy birthday today to Jacqueline Buckner. Happy birthday, Jacqueline Buckner, on Monday the 13th. Amen. We say happy birthday to Jayla Green. Amen. Monday the 13th, Jayla Green. On uh, Tuesday the 14th. Amen. Quick shout out for my sister. Happy birthday, sis. Amen. Um, we say happy birthday to Ace Brandon Pino Greenlee. Amen. We say happy wedding anniversary on Tuesday to Riddell and Wendy Thomas. Amen. We say happy birthday to Tajay Thompson also on the 13th. Amen. All right. I rather wait a minute. Let me not mess that up. The 14th. Amen. Yep. The 14th. Ace. Is on the 14th, the wedding anniversary of Riddell and Wendy Thomas, 14th, Tajay Thompson, 14th, amen. On the 15th, we remember um, in memory of two people, uh, Christine Thompson and Margaret Moore. We remember them. We say happy birthday on the 15th to Elnora Lockwood, amen. Sister Lockwood, God bless you. And we say happy wedding anniversary to Deacon Howard and Dorothy Small, amen. Happy wedding anniversary on the 15th. On the 16th. We say happy birthday to um, Mark, I believe that's Ambrose, amen, I hope I didn't mess that up, and Josiah Franklin on the 16th. On the 17th, we say happy wedding anniversary to uh, Curtis and Dolores Thompson, amen, happy wedding anniversary to you. And then finally, Saturday, the 18th, we say uh, happy birthday to Dian Dianasia Miles, amen, happy birthday to you. We want to remind each and every one of you that on Wednesdays, just for about 20 to 25 minutes, we have our Bible study um, virtually at 7 o'clock. So we'll be right here this Wednesday, Lord willing, at 7 p.m. Amen. And to all of our youth, young adults, and students, we want you to know that on Sunday, August 2nd at 1230, I believe, 1230, there's going to be a recognition day for our graduates, for those who have achieved honor, merit roll, whatever kind of uh, award you've had um, in your school. I know it's been a tough year, the, the last few months, 
but we want to honor you. And so on uh, August 2nd at 1230, outside, of course, um, with your mask, we're going to have something to honor you in a major way. And so to be a part of this great day, to get accolades acknowledged, um, you have to get your information in uh, to, there's, if you go to the website, I believe on the website, there's an email that you can uh, get all of the information. Our website is mocm.org, mocm.org. You can go to our website and find out all of the information that you need to turn in, all right, and the email attached to that. Or you can simply call the church and find out, how can I be a part of that youth and young adult um, day? Um, with, with, you know, I'm a graduate, my child's a graduate, and you want them to be a part of it. Let's, let's not rob them of this opportunity. Let's celebrate them because regardless of it being the pandemic, if we don't acknowledge the young people, if we don't acknowledge these graduates, somebody else will. Amen. Amen. And we don't want the wrong company um, giving them props and acknowledging them. And also, uh, there, I believe this year there's going to be a, a scholarship attached to this uh, movement. Is that right? I'm looking at my marketing. Is that happening? I was told that was happening. I was told that was happening, so we'll give you more information about that. And so youth, young adults, graduates, please get your information in to Manal of Church Ministries, and we'll be happy. Thank God for, for those of you who are scattered out there, amen, who see what we've been doing for three months. Praise God. This is what we've been doing, um, just continuing to give God glory. Amen. We, we appreciate your prayers. We're going to keep going higher in Jesus' name. Amen. That's about it for today believe I'm out of time but not out of message we pray that you will join us on Wednesday nights we pray that you will join us uh, next Sunday same time same station right here um, our leaders of the church group two you can come if you want to come if you don't want to come you can watch at home amen whatever your pleasure but we're going to come in here and we're going to be organized in Jesus name amen we're going to do the Lord's Supper amen everybody holding it up amen we're going to we're going to do the Lord's Supper Amen. So everybody stay where you are. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to do the Lord's Supper. We're preparing for the Lord's Supper. Amen. Bless his name. This is our first Sunday of phase one reopening. So in here, we, we ain't used to having people. Amen. But we're going to make sure everybody has communion. And what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a remix as we, when we dismiss what I want is the same door that you came in, I'm going to have you leave out of today. Amen. But we'll do it in sections. So, all right, the same door you came in for those in the sanctuary, which is on the Fenner Conference Room side, unless you have a disability, the Fenner Conference Room side, you'll, you'll leave out through that door. Amen. And we'll alleviate traffic there for today since it's such a small crowd. Amen. And so we'll do it a section at a time after the Lord's Supper. Amen. Uh, can somebody serve me, a deacon, or someone come serve me the Lord's Supper? Amen. Oh, y'all already served me. Bless his name. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kelroy. Amen. Let me find out you're a junior deacon in the making, like my daddy. Amen. <laughs> Listen, we're getting ready um, to partake of the Lord's Supper. We believe in having fun at this church. We're not uptight. We just have a very relaxed setting. Amen. I think we made church so hard and we discovered in three months that all we've been doing, it really don't take all that. All you got to do is just lift Jesus up, amen, and give him the glory. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to partake of your supper. We thank you for this sacred meal. Blessed in the name of Jesus, we say amen. From day to day. In will never lose its power. Come on, some of you came to the drive through yesterday. You have your communion. Let's sing a little bit of this. The blood that Jesus shed for Strength. Oh, yeah, from 
today, today, it will never lose its power, oh, and it reaches. Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room the night that he was betrayed. He took the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now eat together. In like manner, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of my blood, which has been shed for the remission of your sins. Let us now drink. And after this was complete, Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives singing a hymn. At this time, we're going to consider ourselves dismissed. We're just going to take a seat in the sanctuary one moment. We thank God for each and every one of you watching online. We praise God for you. We love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. In the name of Jesus, may God bless and keep you. This is our prayer. Amen. God bless you. Peace. All right. Hey everybody, all right, so.